Okay, so our next work, number 188, you can re refer to it either as Basin, but it is also known as the Baptistère de Saint-Louis, um, or the Baptistry of St. Louis, or St. Louis. Um, so the main thing that you want to remember about this particular piece is that it has served two different functions for two different, entirely different cultures. And so that's the big takeaway, remembering uh, part of this one. Um, we do actually have a uh, an artist named here, Muhammad Ibn Al Zain. All right, and we know that's the artist, in fact, because he has written his name over and over and over again several times. I want to say seven; it might be more around the circumference of the of the basin. Uh, so he is somebody clearly who is trying, who, who who does beautiful work and also wants people to know it. Right. Um, so we have brass that's inlaid with gold and silver. Uh, so um, we have some expensive, uh, expensive items. We can tell from our expensive materials. We can tell we can you can't see it very well, but there's a lot of decoration happening here. So this is a piece that's going to be very expensive to produce, obviously. Um, so metal work in particular is known is Islamic as uh, is, is an Islamic a spe specifically. Uh, uniquely Islamic art. They're very good at it and, and well known for their metal work. So it's an early Islamic art form. Um, so this particular work was made in Egypt. It's made in Egypt um, uh, uh, in a particular dynasty, the Malmuk dynasty. That part's not super important, but you do need to know that it was made in Egypt because eventually it ends up in France. So it, it goes, uh, you know, a, a not, not a short distance. Um, the first function is that it was used for washing hands in official ceremonies. What do you mean washing hands in official ceremonies? I mean, you know, before you sign an important document or perhaps before you partake in an important meal, um, uh, before you partake in a, or, you know, when you, before you, uh, do something official that, that, it, that is supposed to have some kind of reverence and i don't mean religious reverence i mean just kind of general uh kind of a posture of seriousness or importance you might wash your hands that might be part of the ritual that might be part of the tradition and so this is a basin that was used for that purpose um so we get a better shot here we can see we have a lot this is full of of course engraving engraving right uh we can see people on here oh People, which means that this piece is 100% not religious. It is a secular piece. Again, we do have figural imagery in Islam and Islamic cultures, just not in religious pieces, right? Okay, so let's look at this. We can see that it is divided into one, two, three. We can say there's a fourth layer here. Oh, here's, here's Muhammad, uh, uh, his name written um uh right there you can see it there uh so we have one two three four i always say call them four registers and the central register is a central band and we have malmuk hunters fighting mongol enemies okay um and we have this big this guy in a roundel as well uh we've got uh animals running in the upper and the lower freezes you can also identify them as registers. Uh, and then I already mentioned the roundels. There are four roundels on the outside and four on the inside because the inside also has decoration. They're not nearly as large as they are on the outside. Uh, and I think we have this, you know, this top uh, register that, uh, um, that is just more decorative. Okay. Uh, you know what a freeze is. I, I'm calling it both a freeze and a register because um, there are different layers. So I'm calling them both registers and freezes. A freeze, again, is just a horizontal band of decoration. When we think of freezes, we can also think of something like uh, the uh, the freeze on the Pantheon, right, of the... Uh, the Athenian procession, right? The Panathenaic Pan procession. That's also a frieze. Again, it's just a horizontal band of decoration. Uh, again, there's the signature, Muhammad Ibn al Zain, right? He signed six times, excuse me, I thought it was more. Six times, but still, that's a lot. Um, all right, so we see the interior. So we see the one, uh, two, three, four, that was 
four roundels again. Again, they're a bit smaller. Um, we get some better views of, of this, right, of, of, the, of, the, of the fighters. Okay. Um, so, and they're also vegetal forms, right? So forms of, you know, um, not necessarily flowers, but, um, but vines and things like that. And, and that fills the whole background or the whole base, right? And in fact, it looks like every part of this has some kind of decoration on it. That should remind you of something. Think about what that reminds you of. Um, so uh, we have decoration everywhere. There's not anything anywhere you can look where there's not something to see and to admire. Uh, that should remind you, of course, of horror vacui, the horror of the fear of empty space, right? Um, let's see here. And when you think of horror vacui, of course, you're going to think of the Pixis of Almaguera, right? Which we studied. Uh, but that comes about 400 years uh, before this piece. So this one was made in 968. Remember, where was this made? It was the Umayyad dynasty, and they were located in, in, in Spain, right? Very fierce feeler of me. Okay, uh, so uh, we go here. So, and this is made uh, 1320. Uh, so we are time-wise um, in Europe, still in, we're in the late um, Middle Ages there, right, in Europe. Um, and so, yeah, there we are time-wise. Uh, we know all this already, but again, there's that horror vacui, right? All right, so there was a change in function. Eventually, this basin ended up in France, and it got used in baptismal uh, in baptism rites um, for newborn, not just anybody, but newborns of the royal family. And that began in the 17th century, so in the 1600s. So about 300 years after its creation, it ends up in France and starts getting used for baptisms. Uh, and we can see, um, I think it's on the interior, um, we can, or it might be the exterior. We can see on there, there is a fleur de lis, a fleur de lis. Um, and you remember fleur de lis from when we looked at Versailles, right? The fleur de lis is the, the French, um, French symbol, the symbol of France. And, um, and there's a fleur de lis on there. Uh, there, and you might wonder how, why is there a fleur de lis on there? It may have been added or it might have been there originally. Why, why it might have been there originally? Well, you want to watch the Khan Academy video about that. Okay? Thank you.